So there's a piece of artwork that's been going around on Facebook the last few days since the coronavirus outbreak began. I wonder if you've seen it. Uh, there's no words. It's just a picture. I don't even know who made it, but it looks like this. You'll see it's Jesus holding on to and taking care of the world. Notice the face of the figure is the globe, and its clothes are the flags of all the nations. And as the face of the world is crying, there's Jesus, the great physician, with his stethoscope around his neck. And he's loving and caring for the hurting world, nursing it back to health. Such a powerful image. And that image touches a spiritual nerve for all of us, I think. Because when we go through tough times like this coronavirus outbreak, we can't help but wonder, where is Jesus in the middle of all this? I mean, if he really did rise from the dead and he is alive and well today, then where is he? And what's he doing right now? Well, that picture is a great answer to those questions. That's exactly where Jesus is. And it's exactly what Jesus is doing. Psalm 23 verse 4 says that even when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Jesus is right there with us. And what is he doing? Verse 4 says, his rod and his staff comfort us. What a great promise. Psalm 23 is, of course, full of encouraging words like that. That's why we love it so much. But what we don't often see is that Psalm 23 doesn't just give us great promises to cling to. If we look carefully, we'll also see it lays before us some critical decisions as well. And they're decisions we're all making right now in the midst of this outbreak. I want to suggest to you today that Psalm 23 lays before you six different choices that you're going to have to make as you live your life as a follower of Jesus in the midst of this coronavirus outbreak. So here's the first one. Insecurity or confidence? Psalm 23 starts with those wonderful words. The Lord is my shepherd. In other words, David is saying, my life is not just randomly determined. I'm not at the mercy of fate and chance. I really believe that God exists and that he is watching over me and taking care of me whether I can see it or not. What about you? Do you believe that? Do you believe that the world is spinning out of control right now? Or are you confident that you have a shepherd who is still watching out for his sheep? Because you see, if you're not confident about that, then your life over the next few weeks and months is going to be one of never-ending worry and anxiety. If you don't believe that the Lord is your shepherd, then everything really depends on you and what you do. I mean, you want to protect yourself and your family during this outbreak? You've got to make that happen. You want to make sure this all ends well? Well, then you better do the right things. Make some right decisions. But see, if you believe that the Lord is your shepherd then you don't have to bear that burden anymore because you know you're not in charge of your life. He is. And that's not a bad thing. That's a great thing because he'll do a lot better job of shepherding your life than you would have anyway. See, David is saying to you, if the Lord is your shepherd, then you don't have to feel insecure anymore no matter what's happening. You can live with confidence. That's the first choice you have to make. Now here's the second one. The second one is fear or trust. Are you going to live in constant fear over everything that's happening or with trust in God? David says, because the Lord is his shepherd, I shall not want Now, I actually like the New Living Translation better here. It says, I have everything I need. Maybe not everything I want, but that's probably a good thing. Because a lot of the time, I want things that aren't even good for me. But I believe that God will always provide me 
with whatever I really, truly need. We've all seen recently what happens when people live in fear instead of trust in God. Here's a photo that a woman in Sauk Rapids, Minnesota posted a few days ago on her social media. It's of a guy who is driving home with, yes, two pallets of toilet paper. Now that is taking hoarding to a whole new level. But we've all seen stuff like this over these last few weeks, haven't we? People getting scared and rushing to stores and loading up their carts. And what's happened as a result of living with that kind of fear? This. This is what all the grocery stores look like now. Now people who really need toilet paper can't get it. So you see, living with fear isn't just wrong. And it doesn't just hurt ourselves. When we live with fear, we always end up hurting others along the way. God says, you don't need to live that way. Why? Because the Lord is your shepherd and you have everything you need. That's the second choice you have to make. But now there's a third choice Psalm 23 lays before us. This one's about your thinking. The third choice is this, obsess or at rest. Now this one flows right out of the first two. Right? If the Lord is my shepherd and I have everything I need, then what should my mindset be as I go about my daily life? Will I be obsessively thinking about everything going on in our world right now? Will I be wide awake at 3 a.m. because I'm so stressed out about everything that I can't sleep? Or will I live at rest because I know God is taking care of everything? See, David says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. It's, it's like the shepherd is saying to the sheep, don't worry, I've got this. You rest, be still. Now, I don't know about you, but that little line really speaks to me in the midst of this outbreak. Because it's easy to fall into obsessive thinking these days. I mean, I think about my elderly parents and in-laws and what's going to happen if they get sick. I think about our school and the, the toll that remote learning is taking on our teachers and our families. I think about our church and the negative financial impact the outbreak could have on us. I think about how much food I have in my house and how long we can hold off until we have to go back to the store to get more. And yes, sometimes I even think about how much toilet paper do we still have. Here's the thing. It's not wrong to think about all those things. I mean, they're all legitimate concerns. You have to think about them. The question is, how do you find peace in the midst of thinking about all of these things? See, sometimes... It's like we think we can strategize our way out of these problems, right? If, if we just think about every possibility and what could happen and what we would do if it did happen, then we can be at peace, so we think. But have you noticed that that never works? <laughs> at some point, the more we think about things, the worse we feel, David says in Psalm 23, there comes a time when you need to just stop and let the shepherd take care of things. You know, there's another psalm, Psalm 62, that says it like this. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. So that's the third decision you have to make in the midst of this outbreak. What's your mindset going to be? Are you going to obsess or be at rest? Which leads us to our fourth decision. Our fourth decision is control or follow. Right In these tough times that are so uncertain, are you going to try and control everything? 
or are you going to follow Jesus? David says, he leads me. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. More modern translations usually say something like this. He guides me in the right path. They do that because it's not really about righteousness in the theological sense of the word. It's about direction. Right? God's pointing me, leading me in the right way. The question is, is your life really in your own hands? Do you have to figure out the right way to go? Is your future, your well-being ultimately dependent on what you do? on what you decide, on what you choose. David says to us, the answer to all of those kind of questions is no. You don't have to live with the burden of trying to control all the outcomes of your life because you've got a shepherd who is leading you and guiding you through this. Now understand, David's not saying, hey, you've got choices to make, you better choose wisely. No, what he's saying is, no matter where you go, no matter what you decide, whether you make good decisions or bad decisions, either way, the Lord will lead you and guide you along his path for you. You don't need to control everything. You just need to trust the one who is, the Lord, your shepherd. Which leads us to the fifth choice. Circumstances or presence? This one's about focus. What are you going to focus on during this outbreak? All these tough circumstances around you or the unfailing presence of the Lord, your shepherd? David says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Now, this is a really interesting verse because in the original Hebrew text of Psalm 23, shadow of death is actually a single word. It's a compound word. It's two words that have been put together to make one word, shadow and death. And they did this because there's no other way in Hebrew to express what linguists call the superlative the superlative refers to the highest or best of something. So, for example, they had no way to call the innermost sanctum of their temple the holiest place. That's the superlative, right? So instead, they called it what? The holy of holies. Now, what does that mean? It simply means the holiest place. It's the same thing here. David is talking about the darkest circumstances imaginable. Even then, the Lord will be with him. The New Living Translation says it like this. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. That's a pretty good translation of what David is saying. David's saying, in these dark times of his life, he can focus all his thoughts on the bad circumstances. But when he does, it just breeds more and more hopelessness and despair. Or he can focus on the never-failing presence of the Lord, his shepherd, who is with him even then. And when he does that, his fears subside. So which one are you doing? You know, these are some dark days we're living in right now. Are you dwelling on the darkness of your circumstances? Or are you dwelling on the never-failing presence of your Savior who is with you even now and who will never leave you or forsake you? Now that leads us to our sixth and final choice that Psalm 23 asks us to ponder. The sixth choice is accept or reject. Will you reject God when he allows tough things like this to happen in your life? Or will you accept that God sometimes allows difficulty and struggle in our lives because he loves us? 
See, David says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, sometimes the Bible talks like this, and it's just using two different words to describe the same thing. But did you know that many Bible commentators say there was a difference between the rod and the staff of the ancient shepherd? The rod was shorter, kind of like a club, and was used to fend off wild animals that would come and attack the flock. But the staff was a longer instrument that was used by the shepherd to push and direct the sheep, sometimes rather forcefully. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Isn't that interesting? I mean, of course, the rod comforts me. I expect that, right? I'm I'm comforted knowing that my shepherd is going to protect me from my enemies. But David also says, your staff the one that you use to strike me sometimes. That's a comfort to me too. Now what's David saying? He's saying that sometimes God does his best work in us through times of great struggle and difficulty. But so often when we go through tough circumstances, our prayers become nothing more than, dear God, please change my circumstances. Make them better. Now, that's not wrong to pray that, but you know what? Sometimes God is more interested in changing you than he is with changing all the circumstances of your life that you don't like. And the question is, will you reject God because of that? Or will you, like David, accept that God is always working for your good, even when bad things happen? So there you go, six choices you have to make. And here they are again, insecurity or confidence, fear or trust, obsess or at rest, control or follow, circumstances or presence, accept or reject. That picture I showed you at the beginning is absolutely right. That's what Jesus is doing in the midst of this outbreak. We know that because in John 10, Jesus says, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. That's what Jesus is doing right now. The question is, what are you going to do?